Hi, is this uh, B.L. Kozad? That's me. Hey, this is Stu Chaffetz from Shark. How are you? I'm doing good. So I'm calling up about the debate. I wanted to give you the address where uh, we want to debate you in Oklahoma. It's actually apparently not that far from you. Um, if you're ready, I could. if you want to write it down or I could just tell you. Uh, but anyway, I'll just tell you then. So um, we are going to be at 102 Southwest 5th Street in Lawton, Oklahoma. Um, are you familiar with that? That's the actually the uh, city of Lawton's municipal clerk's office. 102. 102 what? Southwest 5th Street. In Lawton. Now, uh, are you familiar with that? Yeah, I'm familiar with Lawton. Okay, so that's actually the uh, um, this, the municipal clerk's office, and um, we'll, we'll when it gets closer, we'll figure out the exact date and time. But we thought that's close to you. We're actually going to be in that area. And, um, you know, we can uh, debate you then. Because obviously, you know, this the other one is supposed to happen in a, uh, a few days from now, and you never gave us the address of where it is going to be. Oh, yeah, it's in Morgantown, Kentucky. Yeah, that's not an address, and, though, that's a town. And the exact address, I told you I would get, send you the exact address, uh, address on Friday uh, as soon as the guy goes and picks up the keys so we know we have it confirmed. So you don't have it confirmed yet? Yes, yes, we do. But I don't want anybody calling in and... Uh, see, we've had this uh, kind of situation before where we had something scheduled and had something set up and then turn around and, and literally, before we could go pick up the keys, a bunch of animal, the animal rights individu individuals started bombarding phone calls to get the debate canceled. And when did that happen? Uh, that was about a year and a half ago uh, against another group uh, that I was going to debate. Uh, see, I'll be discussing the Constitution of the United States, uh, which I've been studying for about 30 years. So I will be explaining how the these animal rights laws violate the first, the fourth, the fifth, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, by and through the fourteenth amendment of the Constitution, because they're all of these animal rights laws are rooted in communism. Uh, where? What group was this? What group? Who were you going to debate? Say again. What group were you going to debate? Uh, I don't even remember the name of the group uh, right now. Uh, I can tell you that the. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I don't care who I debate because the Constitution of the United States is absolute. And all of the, the emotionally based arguments you want to make don't carry any weight. Uh, you know, we could, uh, we'll, we'll save the arguments for the actual debate itself. There's no reason why, you know, I don't want to jump the, uh, jump the line with that. Um, but uh, so you are you you know you just the problem is that you really shouldn't wait until two days ahead of time. I mean, obviously we're not going to call you, up and you, you sound like you're talking from a long ways away from the phone. Uh, I, this is not a, a great area for talking. Um, the so I guess the question is is that do uh, like do you really think that we would have people call up and cancel it two days ahead of time? I just know that I've already experienced that in the past with uh, the animal rights individuals that I, the group that I was going to debate last time. And did you ever have any kind of debates with any animal rights groups? Uh, online a lot uh, with, of the debates. Uh, the only people I've debated here face-to-face uh, -face are politicians, politicians. Uh, I mean, government officials, uh, lawyers, judges. 
I've discussed this with uh, constitutional law professors where we uh, understand one of the individuals I was talking with and in, in debating this and was a constitutional law professor. And after our debate and after our discussion and things, his statement was, uh, Mr. Kozad is absolutely correct. And his arguments are very clear and there's no way that they can ever be argued against uh, if you're going to support and defend the Constitution. So why do you think uh, they haven't worked then yet? I mean, I, again, I don't want to jump the debate too much, but I am curious about that. No, no, no. It's, it's not that they haven't worked. Understand, they have worked. We've got, using my arguments, Gamecock farmers across the United States, North Carolina, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Oklahoma, have all gotten charges dismissed. But none of the laws have been overturned. As a matter of fact, there's a book you need to pick up, a book that I wrote. Are What's you that? With the book I, are you familiar with the book I wrote? Uh, I think I've seen it. What, Dominion or something? Yeah. God gave man dominion, the foundation of American government. Now, I understand that all of the arguments in that book, all of the, the Supreme Court and federal court decisions in that book, all of the information in that book, I wrote every bit of it. I'm the one that did the research. I'm the one that wrote the constitutional arguments and the motions to dismiss that were signed and filed in the, in the court case. In what court case? In the court case here in Oklahoma. And where is that right that's, now? That's currently going on right now. So, uh, like I said, pick up the book and read it. You're, you're, you're going to get a really good hard education because... You're, either, you're, you're supporting communism, whether you know it or not. And I don't care whether it, if you're supporting communism through ignorance or if you're supporting communism through evil intent, because the results are the same. But you understand that communism is, a, is an ideology. It's not a legal ideology. It's an ideology that says, no, but, uh, basically uh, but talks about... It is a political ideology. It is a political agenda, uh, attempt to force people into a political ideology. Now, the de very definition of terrorism is using force, threat of force, etc., to intimidate people to get pe force people into a political agenda, to a political belief. You and your organization are terrorists. The thing is, is what you're doing is you're, you, the Humane Society of the United States has been so success, successful at their terrorist propaganda. See, the same thing that Goebbels, you know, Joseph Goebbels said, you know, tell a lie big enough, keep repeating it, and everybody will eventually uh, think that it's the truth and accept it as the truth. So the Humane Society of the United States was the, one of the first organizations that were created for this, uh, this propaganda. So and, but if, if, if you think that all, so you're saying all or any, all and any animal protection laws are unconstitutional. They are. So that includes cockfighting laws. Would you include... Uh, let's say horse abuse laws, like people beating up horses. Is that unconstitutional? Unco unconstitutional. Um, Understand, animals are property. Period. So, what about other? So, you, you there is there any animal protection law you think is constitutional? There are none, because animals are property. Understand, I used to teach use of force. Use of force. I used to teach it to security forces, law enforcement. Every time law enforcement officers go out to enforce any law, period, any law, they create situations where they're going to use government force. That force always includes the potential of using deadly force. So therefore, they're creating situations where they're going to potentially kill a human being using the excuse that the duty of the government is to protect the animal that the person owns from the person that owns. They're putting animals above human lives. But what about dog fighting laws? I've never been to a dog fight, never seen a dog fight.
fight. I have no interest in, in seeing a dog fight. But I'm not so arrogant that I think that I have the authority to empower the government to go out and, put, and point guns at Michael Vick and create situations where Michael, the, the government agents may kill Michael Vick to force Michael Vick into my opinion over dogs that he owns. Because I don't put dogs above Michael Vick's life or, uh, his, or even his rights. So, right, so, so. See, I'm, I'm not. I'm not so arrogant that I think that that I have the authority to have somebody else, the government, kill somebody else to force somebody into my opinion. That's you. Okay, so I just want to be careful. I just want to because I I want to get you accurate. So obviously, you know, cockfighting. You think do, there should be no dog fighting laws? What? A, <laughs> right? No anti dog fighting laws. They're, they're unconstitutional. And so any any law involving any sort of protection of an animal you think is unconstitutional? They're all unconstitutional, every one of them. Including the bestiality going laws? All the way back to the animal, going all the way back to the Animal Welfare Act of 1966. Yeah. But you understand that includes bestiality laws, too? I understand. Like I said, I'm not a sick, perverted piece of garbage. The actual person that actually advocates to do away with bestiality was the father of the animal rights laws, uh, the father of the animal rights movement, a guy named Peter Singer. He advocates and says that his goal is to do away with the Judeo-Christian foundations in America because he wants to legalize bestiality. Well, he's not the father of my... I, I, Peter Singer is... I have nothing to do with Peter Singer. Peter Singer also advocates that, a, that, you know, the father of the animal rights group, the movement, he also advocates that a woman should be able to abort her children up to, or a child up to two years after the baby is born. Right. But I'm not Peter Singer. Peter Singer doesn't work for us, so that doesn't matter. So, I mean, no, we have nothing to do with... It doesn't matter because that's part of the animal rights ideology. Well, but you, but uh, you, let me you actually support and endorse let, because you support the same animal rights laws that Adolf Hitler used to destroy human rights in Nazi Germany. Okay, so first, I just have to say this: that uh, Shark is absolutely against people raping animals and all the other abuse. I think that's clear. We think those laws are absolutely constitutional. Uh, you know, I mean, I understand that you think that you would you would want to get rid of all those laws and let people rape animals. I understand that's your position, and I, I, I mean, you know, we don't have to argue that. Uh, you do know that, that going back to the uh, Nazi Germany thing, you do realize that, and I speak to this as someone who, who uh, had relatives in the, who, who were killed in the Holocaust, um, you do realize that a lot of the propaganda they used were comparing Jews to rats. And you, you ever see those videos that they put out no, with the rats no, running? No, no. And no, let me finish. I let you talk. And so that it was by comparing uh, Jews to animals. There weren't animal protection laws. They, they were. It was about comparing because if you could kill a rat, then it was okay to kill a Jew. And and obviously, six million Jews were viciously murdered by the Nazi regime because of that. So. As someone of Jewish faith, as someone uh, who became a vegan, in part because I saw what happened to all those innocent people, um, I, I mean, it, you just don't, I, I don't believe you understand the true history of what's actually going on there. You need to get my book and read it because you'll find out the truth of what I said. Because you're misre misrepresenting, absolutely misrepresenting what I said. Well, what did, you know, what did I misrepresent? The animal rights laws to destroy human rights. There's a research paper that I want to encourage you to look up, and, and it's written by Boria Sachs and Arnold Larluc. It's called Understanding Nazi Animal Protections and the Holocaust. Now, in that research paper, these two college professors state that Adolf, by giving animals rights, by, by Nazi Germany, by Adolf Hitler, by giving animals rights, the real goal was not to raise the status of animals. It was to reduce the status of man to an animal. That's what your animal rights laws do. 
Because once you, the government enacts animal rights laws, they have removed God as a source of man's dominion over the animals. So therefore, now somebody has, they've, they've superseded God. The government then becomes the source and controller of your rights. And then the government has the authority to treat people like government-owned animals. So you s- and that's exactly what Adolf Hitler did in Nazi Germany. And that's why Adolf Hitler, once he enacted animal rights laws, he had reduced man to the status of a government-owned animal, thereby allowing him to go out and call the government herd of two million Jewish animals that he would that he considered inferior animals. That's so, just the reality of the animal rights laws that you're okay. supporting. Yeah, that's that's really not what happened. But you you said only two million. Do you not believe that there were six million Jews killed in the Holocaust? Oh, I believe it. But oh, you I've, do. I've posted things that, and I understand a lot of the pictures and things that I save. I save them to use them against arguments. For, for that I'm having with other people and other discussions. Well, because you did post that one thing where you, where someone, one of your friends, it, it called you out for being a Holocaust denier because you said it didn't happen, or there were there was only a tiny fraction. So you're changing what you wrote now. Is that what you're saying? No. Did you change no, your mind? I'm not changing anything. So which one is go right then? Look, go back and look and read what I wrote. Okay. okay. Go back and look and read at it. As a matter of fact, like I said, I, I really highly encourage you to get the book I wrote. Right. It's called uh, God Gave Man Dominion, the Foundation of American Government. But you do understand you also that, that the basic, one of the real tenets of the Constitution is that there is a, uh, we are not a theocracy. Um, you can be an atheist. You could be whatever religion you want. You can be, you could believe in Zeus and uh, Hera if you wanted to, and you would have the same rights. Uh, uh, let me just finish. So, so there is no religious test. There is no the law is not supposed to look at anyone differently because of their religion, and in fact, you could have no religion, and so, and that is so so. So when you say that God wants there to be these things. It, America, it's just, is found, America is founded on the teachings of Jesus Christ. The teachings of Jesus Christ are judge not lest ye be judged. Let he who is not sin cast the first stone. Everybody gets to make their own choice. Again, believe where believe where is can you point me to the believe in Jesus or not believe in Jesus? Right. That's but, what allows the freedom for us to make individual choices today. Can you point me to what part of the Constitution it mentions Jesus Christ? Oh, it, it, understand, the foundation of America is based upon the teachings of Jesus Christ. Not the theology, but the teachings of judge not lest you be judged. That's what enables different people of different faiths to make up their mind what faith they choose to, to believe in. Well, again, See, but where's your constitutional basis for that? God, everybody thinks that the word God means a particular God. It does not. See, the foundation, uh, even in the Declaration of Independence, it says our rights are derived from our Creator. Everybody gets to choose for themselves what Creator they believe in. And or not. God. But what if you God don't believe in a Creator? A word that means deity. But what if people, but people who don't believe in God still have a right to exist in America and have ah, the full protection of the Constitution? Don't believe, they, they don't believe if they're an atheist, if they're truly an atheist, then nature is the source of their rights. They believe that everything is just natural. They were born natural, natural rights. And again, if you believe that nature is a source of your rights, then nature is your, your, your God. It's what you believe in. It's what you choose to put your faith in. And since everything that happens in nature is natural, then, you know, it becomes survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest is what supplies, uh, is what is applied, then God, uh, man's dominion over the animals is an absolute. 
but because it, we're superior. Because the survival of the fittest, and we're superior. Yeah, but survival of the fittest is not in the Constitution either. I mean, all your things, I understand from a religious aspect. I understand. You, you're going you're gonna to learn a whole lot about the Constitution whenever you pick up my copy of my book and read it. Yeah, I, that's okay. I've got lots of interesting things to read. Um, I, and none of them mention, I have to tell you something, I have watched a lot and read a lot about the Constitution, and there's nothing there uh, mentioning being a basis, that Jesus Christ was the basis of for any of the rights were given. In fact, if you, you know, the honest answer is that we know that the, it was the, the, uh, the, the, the men who wrote the Constitution that decided what rights we would have and what we wouldn't have. So it's very, it's, I mean, they didn't, unless you think an, an angel came from heaven and was there writing the Constitution, uh, it was, it was men deciding and haggling and, and choosing which, which parts would go in and which parts wouldn't. But again, we don't have to, I, I don't want to, I mean, look. You're going to get a really, really hard reality check right. during our discussion and our debate. Because you have no clue as to what you're talking about. Well, I mean, I we'll we'll, we'll let that. we'll let others decide that. Again, I don't. I, I feel no. You know, no, no, we you, don't have to argue you, that. You will, you will know when we get through. You will know that just exactly how ignorant you are okay. of the uh, of your understanding of the United States government and the Constitution and the founding of America. Right. Because. Well, you, who do you think like found said, America? America is a constitutional republic where the rights of the individual are protected and guaranteed from the majority. See, the majority do not need the protections of a constitution. They're the majority. They can vote in whatever law they want. The purpose of the constitution is to protect the rights of the minority from the majority. But then there are the also... Lower, in the, in, in but, the lowest number of any minority is one. Thus, the entire purpose of the Constitution is to protect the God-given rights of the individual from the majority. And by doing so, it protects the God-given rights of the individual from the power, of abusive power, of the government. But also a civilized uh, republic also has the ability... Also has the ability... Whenever you support killing another person to force that person into your opinion over chickens... Yeah, again, no, who's knows. been... That's how, not civilized. How many people have been killed? I mean, because I know a lot of people have been killed at cockfights. You know, I could send you no, articles no, no. about that. A There's lot been... of people have been denied their God-given constitutionally protected rights up under the Fourth Amendment to equal protection of the law. We can't call... You criminalize the industry here and try to push it underground... And by pushing it underground, we now no longer have the op opportunity to call law enforcement officers or to have law enforcement officers come out and and, and be there at our facilities to protect, uh, the, to provide the equal protection of the law under the 14th Amendment. But the law is, says I mean, that it's illegal. That, uh, if you criminalize the football game, then you'd have cr criminal elements at the football game. Well, I mean, if, if, if it was a... If you don't criminalize the football game, then guess what? Now you have a, a sheriff's deputies walking around the football game, police officers walking around the football game to ensure there's no criminal activity, huh? Are there any laws you think are constitutional? Laws to protect human rights and to protect human beings, yes. Well, what about all the... De as you, as you, you must know, there's a lot of uh, illegal drugs associated with cockfighting. Um, no, other things. You're, you're, so, you're blowing smoke out your ass because I've been to the cockfights and have been going to the cockfights since I was 14 years old. See, here in Oklahoma, where cockfighting was legal up until 2004, there were no laws criminalizing cockfighting. So I used to go to the cockfights from the time I was 14 years old up until just a, a, a couple of years ago. Uh, and hell, I'm going to tell you, I, I still go to the cockfights today. But I have personally seen it where there, there were no drugs. I mean, for, from, from the time I was 14 to the time in 2002, whenever, or 2004, whenever they shut it down, 
I never, never once saw any drugs at a cockfight. Hell, I only saw one, one fist fight at a cockfight. One. But you know that, and but you was, do. It was two guys that were there that actually were, were talking and discussing and, 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 and having a pretty good time. And they got to talking about their girlfriend. And as they were talking about their girlfriend, they suddenly realized they were talking about the same girl. So then if, well then if, okay, then hold on a second then. Cause let's take the, let's take your own argument one little step further. So I, it sounds like you're acknowledging that if cockfighting was associated, if there were drugs that obviously hurt people and we want to protect people, then it would be okay to shut down cockfighting because the greater interest would be in protecting the people who are hurt by the drugs. So therefore. No, no. So you're saying it. Understand, there's drugs at a football game too. But you don't criminalize the football game because one or two people at the football game have drugs. But cock but but you, you know, are you denying? I, I'm just curious. What you advocate is that we should criminalize all activity everywhere that there might possibly be drugs. Well, is that how stupid you are? Well, I mean, first of all, as you know, I'm sure that you are so smart to know. Well, uh, let me finish. Uh, I'm asking you. I'm answering your questions. Somebody might, somebody might at the football game might have a drug. I'm answering your question. The, the difference between those two things is that the cockfighting is known for being a haven for dealing drugs. In fact, no, I have to tell not. you this. Let me tell you this. No, it's not. It is. You, 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 we can go back and forth yelling, but I'm going to tell you a couple of things. You know, we, we put up a, 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 a tip line, and a lot of cockfighters call up very racist things they say. But we've gotten a lot of support from people who are against cockfighting because they know it's destroying their communities. They know that that cockfighting across the country um, is just so damaging. And I would encourage you to, you like to read? I would encourage you to read. Especially emotionally based people. It's not emotion. They're indoctrinated in supporting a communist agenda because they, they, they literally want to force other people into their emotionally based opinion. Well, you sound very emotional right now because what I'm doing is giving you facts. Well, I'm, giving I'm giving you facts and then you're just you yelling about communism. You're me to protect the chicken that I own. Are you di- you're alive. You're talking to me, so you're not killed. You're not dead right huh? now. You, you, you said I'm killing you to protect the chicken? You support killing me. You support sending government agents out to kill me me into your opinion over chickens I own. I get, uh, first of all, we don't, but no you one's killed you yet. You're sending government agents out to, to, to force me into your opinion over chickens. But yes no. do I have to state the obvious that no one has actually do killed you? I support sending like, government agents out to point guns at me over a chicken that I own, yes or no? Uh, wait, say, yes say no. that question again. Do you because support sending government agents out to point guns at I would support. I support law enforcement enforcing anti cockfighting laws. Government agents pointing guns at me to force me into your opinion over chickens I own. So if you obey the law, then it's not a problem. No one's forcing you. Of a chicken above my human rights and above my human life. Okay. Period. Yeah, but that's not how it works because, first of all, again, you keep saying, you know, you're being very emotional, and I'm going to ask you to calm down because seriously, I'm trying to have a conversation with you. You're absolutely emotional. You're, you're telling me that people are coming to kill you, and I'm saying no one's coming to kill you. Do you, do you, are you too ignorant to really understand that when law enforcement officers go out to make any, to enforce any law, they create a situation where they're going to kill people and potentially kill people? Ask George Floyd. Right. He wasn't cockfighting, though. He was murdered. Uh, but he, but the cops were enforcing a law, were they, or were they not? Uh, what law do you think are he was they, breaking? Were they, or were they not enforcing a law? What law do you think he was breaking? If, uh, were they or were they not arresting him, putting him in them in handcuffs because they feel like he, would, he was, was being arrested for violating the law? So you, are you really comparing yourself to someone who's never been killed, as we've acknowledged, and we have that on the record, to, to, a, to a police officer putting his knee on an African-American man's neck and, and letting him die after seven or eight minutes? Are you really going to do that? Are you really making that leap? Because I, I can tell you, 
Again, these are emotional I'm arguments you're making you that don't make really, any sense. Really For some reason, you just really dense. You're not intelligent at all. Again, you? do you realize you're being very emotional right you, now? You, I, can you, I you, can you I bring you back to logic? You literally think you literally think that law enforcement officers go out and arrest people, and and they do not create. Oh, oh, well, everybody just has to comply, or everybody has to do what they're told. Uh, there's no risk. You know, you, again, uh, you're very emotional. Can you want to take a minute to relax and then we'll continue? Because I think you're being too emotional because, again, I think anyone who compares criminal, illegal cockfighting, where no one's been... Again, the only killings that I know of... Dumbass. Of course it is. Fighting laws are unconstitutional. Any law that is unconstitutional is actually an illegal law. Period. And that means the enforcement of the illegal law is an illegal act by the government. All right. Listen, I. Do you need to, again? Do you want to take a breath? Because you're being far too emotional. Again, you're, you're just. You're. you're, you're, you're I, it sounds like honestly. Hey, get you a pencil and a piece of paper because I'm going to explain this to you to where even you you. Ask and understand it. Okay, I'll tell you what. I, I want to do something. Let's count to ten together, okay? Come on, ten. We're going to count backwards. Nine, until you calm down. I need you to calm down and not be so emotional. Well, okay. again, I, it, it, I'm talking to someone who just said that even though things are illegal and they've been, uh, they, they have cockfighting has been uh, uh, fought in courts and it's been uh, justified as being illegal. So you don't seem to have a great track record with that. So I'm just saying that you seem to be very emotional. Uh, actually, I actually I have a really really good track record with that. Then why is it still illegal? So been over to overturned so I, I don't know look you just told me that uh you know that uh you think these laws are about killing cockfighters which they are not um you think uh, they that are. but who well how many cockfighters have been murdered by police during a cockfight uh, the only reason it hasn't happened so far is because cockfighters are very uh, are farmers and ranchers they are very very good honest hard-working people they're not criminals but they are criminals if they bite the law. No, they're not criminals. Do you not understand how that definition works? You, you don't understand. If that you you're commit a, a crime, you're Do a you criminal. Don't understand that you're a terrorist? Well, of course I'm not. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Because here's what I've not done. I have because never. You are, you are advocating for the government to go out and perform acts of terrorism for you. But they haven't, though. They have. But they, you're, you're claiming you that. You, you just admitted. The agents like the, like the, the raid that just happened here in Oklahoma here uh, a, a while ago, a couple of years ago, that's on a court case that is currently gone going right now, where law enforcement officers pulled up onto the scene, pulled up at the damn, uh, at the cockfight, and the first deputy jumped out of his vehicle, pulled his gun, and started shooting. 
But you've just said that no cockfighters have ever been killed by police officers during raids. He wasn't killed. That nobody, they, it, this guy, they wasn't so it's killed. never happened. But the law enforcement officer pulled his gun and started shooting. Well, let, then let's let's talk about that because you you bring up an interesting I point. That there was a law enforcement officer that did actually shoot a cockfighter uh, and things uh, because they come in and made the raid and he shot a cockfighter. Now the cockfighter didn't die, but the shot, cockfighter was shot. Well, what was the cockfighter doing? Was did he pull a gun on the cop? No, he was. Well, how, how do you know? I mean, you know, let's look into that. Let's look into see what that guy did. But he, here's the thing: now you brought up a, you brought up a really interesting point. You, you support that happening? You support law enforcement officers pulling guns, pointing guns at gang cop farmers. You support the law enforcement officers using force, which always includes deadly the possibility of deadly force, because you support government agents killing people. To force people into American citizens into your opinion over chickens. Okay, well, let's. That, that's I'm going to ask, because I've answered your you questions. I want you to answer terrorist. my question now. I want you to answer you my question. Are a terrorist. Well, let's talk about that, because I think that's a really important point. And this is, this is, now, what, this is what. No, no, uh, uh, excuse me, you, excuse me. I answered your question. I answered your question. You have to answer my question, okay? No. Um, you yes, you do. Because here's the thing. And never in my life. Never in my. Oh well, then just, just one. There's one last thing. Uh, I need to know a date when we're going to have this debate. Right. I, I, I'll tell you that, but there's there's one important. No, we need. To, uh, I need a date when we're going to have and time so that we're going to have this debate, so I can have. Well, you know, you know the address I gave you, right? If we're going to have this in Lawton with all the people I know, hell, I can have five hundred people there. Yeah, that's fine. Do you know why we chose that location? I don't care. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you. It's because that's the location where you called up the municipal clerk's office. And talking about being a terrorist, you said to her that you were so angry about a traffic citation that you said to her, you know, asked if you were going to have to start shooting up the courthouses like they're doing in Hungary. No, no, no. And then, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, I'm going to finish this. And did not understand what I told, tried to tell her. And then, and then, obviously, this I, woman and was. And what I said, and, and understand what I said, ha, was absolutely taken out of context by this woman. Another. If you're going to start little, shooting little, up, little woman, because what I said was, and I've got the document documentation and things. What I stated was, uh, now I understand why people shoot up courthouses. Okay, you don't realize how well, that's, that's a terroristic threat you just made, basically. That's that that not a to, you understand that. if you sure understand why, understand why if, see, if you understand America, why people shoot and, and other people, people do not I mean, what kind of a human the, being does that? And what is actually being said? But listen, you said that and, to a and woman. That's why when I went and sit down and, and, and understand, yeah, I went and sit down to talk with the DA. That's why they never even filed any uh, and went ahead and took. Uh, and went to court with me on anything and dismissed all the charges because he even knew that the charges were bogus bullshit. Right. So you, when you told them and you spoke to the detective as well, you said, I'm not going to jail, I won't be arrested. But then they have the mugshot of you. So clearly, what? why did you tell him that you, you carry a gun at all times, you won't be arrested? You told the court uh, that you understand. You're saying you understand why people shoot up courthouses. I mean, I to understand that. violence. I mean, that's I'm a terrorist. A private investigator. I carry a gun all the time. Do you understand what? But it do you takes understand to that get a you are by definition a terrorist? Do you understand what it takes to get a license as a private investigator and all the, the classes and schooling and the money you got to pay and things? I'm not going to give that up, and I'm not going to 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 be. Uh, Arrested and all that shit over a hundred dollars damn traffic ticket. Well, how did they get that mugshot of you? Not whenever I I had the opportunity. Hell, I could have paid a hundred damn dollars and and been done with it. But I wanted to be able to go into court and talk about what was going on, and they didn't want me to. And how did you get? And the woman, she gets all irate because I've got two court cases going on at the same time simultaneously. 
and I can't on this exact same day in two different places, and I can't be at both. And so so I'm you threaten her. her. Huh? So, so you, you get angry, her, and you threaten her. And she said, and she's threatening me that, uh, well, you, you have to show up. The, and, and ma'am, I just need a change. So I, I want to show up, but I want to do it. At a, I want to come there. But what kind of a, but let me ask you a question. I'm not, I'm not going to be arrested what? over a $100 damn traffic. Well, case. then how did they get the mugshot of you? Uh, because uh, the, the woman uh, was a... Uh, Absolutely, uh, how should I say? Frightened of your threat to shoot up Gordon? She's, she's, uh, just a point blank. She's a not smart enough to comprehend what I'm saying. So, uh, but, but how did they get the mugshot of you? Were you arrested? I was arrested. Yeah. Okay, so you, when you said I'm not going to jail, I won't be arrested, that was. Just like Stevie, so that was just like, like blow. Stevie was arrested whenever he took the, and threw the plane over the. Yeah, but do you understand? Protesters. He never threatened to kill anybody like you. He, uh, he never said, I understand no, why people actually, kill people. No, no, no. And he actually, I, I never threatened to kill anyone either. You don't think saying, I understand what, why people shoot up courthouses is, could be very, pretty easily and 100% taken as. You know, understanding why people kill other people is a really bad thing to say to a woman. Like, I guess, look, you can you can call me names. I don't care because I'm a guy. You're a guy. But why why go after a woman? Doesn't don't you understand how little that makes you? It makes you seem like you're a a petulant child. I mean, I, that, that's the difference here. Like, I would never say that to a woman. I'd never in a million years. So I, I'm just letting you know that um, you know you're you're on you're very emotional anger. When, when you when you reach a point when you talk with somebody that's really really foolhardy uh, and, and and ignorant and does and, and literally does not want to try to understand anything you're saying, you just simply tell them say you know throw up your hands in frustration and just like I told her, I said, man, you know now I understand why people shoot up courthouses. Right, that's and I would a, never say that to anybody. To, I would. That's not a threat to. to you're gonna, I'm going to go out and shoot up. No, that's not what that is. But you understand that's, that's why people kill other people. That says, you know, now I understand why people think that you're a, dumb, a dumbass. Now I, th- now I understand why people think that, that, that individuals like you with these animal rights groups are fools. But we never, now we never said, are, we never you know, intimidated a clerk by saying, I understand why people kill Murder people at courthouses where where she works, by the way. And I'll be really, really, really happy when I meet Steve Hendy. Because little Stevie, little Stevie's going to get a big, big surprise. Yeah, but you're changing the subject because who, you know, I I still want to answer that. When you were intimidating this woman, did you feel bad as a human being? Nobody was intimidating the woman. Well, she she felt. was trying to intimidate this woman. It says she was concerned. She I'll believed you, right. you. She and believed you. I live in Illinois, okay? What was that? And, and, I, and, I've, and I've already got Steve, this little Stevie's address, uh, saying things. I don't, I, but see, you know, I'm not trying to threaten anybody, but I've got his address. So what does that mean if that's not a threat? Is that a threat? I, I'm asking you. Oh, 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 that's a threat? I'm asking no, you if that's a threat. Not. So why do, why would you say to me that you have his address then? For a long time. Yeah, and and Wayne Pacelli's address for a long time. Right. So what does that have to do with anything? It has nothing to do with threatening anyone. Yeah, but did you didn't? It's just a. You did not. Excuse me, You did not. Statement that I that I that I have it. You did not go to Miss Brooke and tell her that I have your address and then be quiet. Brooke, is that how you pronounce her name? Brooch, Brooch. The, the the clerk that you said you understood uh, why I people. Don't even know. I don't I don't know her name. I never got her name. I didn't didn't care about her name. I mean, it wasn't important to me. Well, it was important to her. That's why she. You know, there was an affidavit for arrest issued because well, she believed because you. She, that's because she's an overly scared little girl. And you don't. And, and and so you think it's okay to scare girls and women by telling them you understand why shooting up God courthouses. Damn, you're a dumbass. I I'm I'm trying to scare the damn girl. Nobody. But well, you're the one who said that, though. Are you too stupid to understand this? I'm a single parent with full custody of a of a little girl. I've had my 
my daughter is 17 years old. I've had custody since my daughter was five. But then why did you then want to make a woman feel intimidated? Nobody tried to scare a girl. It's just she's easily scared, and and for whatever reason, I don't know why. I'll tell you the reason. Because you said you understand why shooting up courthouses, why people kill, murder other people. Why would you say that to another human being unless there is some kind of threat involved in there? I mean, I I think any normal person would look at that and do exactly what you did. I understand why why cops get frustrated and they want to put their neck on, their, on somebody's neck. They want to put their knee on somebody's neck. You I understand that? The frustration. That doesn't mean that I would ever do it. That doesn't mean I could do it. But I can say that I understand why they do. But do you understand if you told somebody that you understand why shooting up courthouses, uh, you understand it, is I such a really I, just I why, terrible thing to I say to a woman. Why a cop of a guy's uh, back whenever he's reaching inside of a car. Uh, I understand that, too. Well, I don't understand that. I don't think that's something that we should understand. The cop wants to go home just as badly as everybody else. He wants to go home alive. And if he has to kill you to go home alive, he'll kill you. Understand? So you, when you said that you understood... the thing is, is it's just like I just said. I, whenever I say it, I understand why a cop uh, may put his knee on a, on a, on somebody's neck. I understand it. Does not mean I condone it, but I understand why why he may do it. So when you understand why people so shoot courthouses, and I'll tell you right now, I understand why. Yes, I understand. I understand why people do it. Just like the guy in Arkansas that shot uh, shot the cops and uh, shot at the the courthouse in Arkansas. I understand why people do it because they're frustrated. That does not mean I condone it. Well, then why would you, you tell that to a, a clerk? Why are you too dense to understand that? Well, I, I don't think the problem here is is that you didn't just say that. You, this wasn't a thought you had while you were driving. You specifically said it to a woman who works at the, the, the clerk's office, who's part of the legal system, and you're talking about shooting up courthouses. I understand, I understand, I understand this. I understand why cockfighters and, and game cock farmers and other farmers and ranchers, I understand why they talk about killing uh, animal rights idiots. But that does not mean that I would condone doing it. So you, do you, you, you think you understand why cockfighters want to kill people, but and you don't understand why that's a criminal why, thing? I understand why game cock farmers and, and like the Bundys out here in Nevada... Uh, I understand, you know, where they had their their standoff at the Bunkerville. They had their standoff against the Bureau of Land Management. I understand. So what you're why saying is that, that cockfighters, you know, you I know, cockfighters want to because they get frustrated with the situation and what's going on. But you, so you're saying is that you understand why cockfighters want to murder <laughs> people. So you understand why cockfighters want to murder people then, which means cockfighters are threatening you murder. Son of a bitch. No, no, that's... You're very emotional. That's not what I said at all. And you fucking know it. You got I to listen to you. I'm, oh my goodness. What language? You're very emotional. Do you need a break? Do you have like a little squeezy toy? You could like let some of your things in? And if you don't want somebody to get mad, then don't... I'm not lying about anything. You just said you understood why cockfighters want to murder human beings. Why somebody may want to? You didn't say somebody. You said cockfighters. uh, An animal rights idiot. I understand why somebody might want to hurt an animal rights idiot. I understand why somebody may want to uh, cripple or, or beat the hell out of an animal rights idiot. So you're saying that... I understand why they might want to do that. Right. So do you understand then when I say that... I that I would condone them doing it. It's just like I told you earlier. I don't, I don't have anything to do and never been associated with dog fighting of any kind. I don't care to. But I'm not so arrogant that I want to send government agents out to potentially kill Michael Vick. But they didn't kill him. To force Michael Vick, in my opinion. Right. Or, or to force so Michael Vick into the law. Could, they didn't create a situation where they're going to use force and, and that force all, 
does not include the possibility of deadly force. Uh, but he didn't die. Again, Michael, you, you keep making Again, stories up. The possibility up. of deadly force is there. But correct? the possibility is that. The possibility of deadly but do you force understand? Is there enforcing the law. Yes. I can show you no, articles no. where cockfighters yes, kill no. people. Cockfighters kill and rape yes, people. No. Do you will you acknowledge? You will. I want you to get a piece of paper and write this down. Cockfighters have cockfight. I'm getting. I'm telling you. I'm telling you to get a piece of paper. This is very important. What I'm going to tell you. Cockfighters are havens for drug deal. You write it down first. You want to get a nice fountain pen with some blue ink. It'll be very clear. Well, we're having a conversation. Any, uh, I'm not going to get a piece of paper. I'm not going to write anything Go down. get a piece of paper right you, now. You get a piece of paper and you write Listen, no, you get... I'll tell you what. I want you to get two pieces of paper. Because this is what I have to say is so important. And then I'm going to do is we're going to make it 